Alright, the forces are down for uh, turn two of the fall of the caliphates. Um, we've got that siege going on, we've got this siege going on. Seljuks have gathered a lot of forces near Antioch with the hopes of boosting that before uh, some crusader or relief force. There, It's going to be tough because all of Antioch's forces are actually under here. Only the Byzantines are available. So it, really, unless Thoris comes into play, I don't, I don't see an easy way of driving off even that weak force. Uh, you could sally out with the defenders, perhaps. Um, Almeric has a fairly decent-sized stack, however, down here at the Kingdom of Jerusalem. And he was considering going up to Damascus, but we've also got a decent number of uh, Seljuks in Damascus. The problem here is... The Muslims don't have, and, and this was the thing that I saw right away, unless they have a card for it in their hand, they don't have a way to get down to Egypt and interfere with it. I'm not sure how this scenario is supposed to play out, uh, whether they kind of slip through the back door here or whatever, but the Crusaders definitely have the advantage in terms of being able to trigger things. The historical event there was an ugly one, uh, the Crusaders did march in to support the Egyptian ruler and kind of screwed it up by massacring uh, a bunch of people for no real reason um, and pretty much destroyed their chances because of that. Unless there's an event card, and I didn't see one, that'll trigger that, I, I, I don't see why the Crusaders would lose the Egyptian battle necessarily. Uh, the only other option is, of course, now that it's been triggered, now that the Egyptian war is in play, if their choice of leader loses out. Now, he's got all the advantages, though. The only question is, well, he's sitting there trying to siege Cairo. He could lose that siege and be weakened. But that's not what happened. What happened was the Seljuks went in, and I'm assuming they slipped in through the Transjordan area, and intervene directly. Christians played an interesting card here, riots in Cairo, which drove the Fatimids out, the, uh, the side they're not supporting, out of Cairo. They moved up to uh, Atfi. Um, the problem with this, and the reason the, the Crusaders played this card, was it's harder to defend a castle. A lot of troops in a castle doesn't really help you anywhere near as much. It doesn't increase the resistance factor. And you can't even have the amount of troops that the uh, uh, Egyptian, that the pro-Muslim Egyptians, even though they're all Muslim, uh, have within that castle. So it might force a field battle, which could be a risky thing. On the other hand, it just, overall, I saw it as an advantage because in the end, Cairo is what you need, and I wasn't sure that I was going to be able to get it easily. Now holding Cairo, I put the emphasis over on the Seljuks to try to take it away from the pro-Crusader side, and as well, if they can win the Egyptian... Um, civil war, that's an advantage. But I don't know if they really have to. They're now in a defensive position that they prefer. For the uh, Seljuks, they played a card and moved reinforcements. Now, they denuded Aleppo of troops, which is somewhat dangerous, but there aren't that many things that can besiege them. Just the Byzantines again, who would have a hard time getting there. One, two, three, four, they can make it to here on a normal move. And I'd be able to do an interception and maybe hit them hard. Now I have enough forces at Antioch with the blockade, etc. I think I can take that. And that would mitigate the risk of Egypt, I think, driving the Crusaders below the victory conditions they need, which is of some value. Um, still, you can't win this game without Cairo. Elmerick over here used a lightning campaign to allow himself to move faster. Now, he also removed his troops out of Jerusalem and slid up and hit Damascus. No chance of a, a automatic surrender. So, uh, he's positioned there, and there's a six resistance factor. For the Siege of Antioch, opened up with some cards. Big one, three resistance factor drop. Uh, but the sortie that came out raised it by two more. The military orders 
oh, I'm sorry, ladders and mantlets uh, dropped it by one. There was an assault. It went in the Crusaders' favor, but was a close one. It wasn't a major victory. Hmm, speaks of the witch. Both lost one unit, so there's no chance of a uh, of, of the diplomacy marker getting moved there. And then the resistance factor goes back up to three for a failed assault. <sighs> Nothing going on over in Egypt anymore. Well, the cards played out with any further uh, real movement on the sieges, except upward, actually. You can see we're at a six here without the blockade. And here, well, we still got the blockade, but we're up to a four. There were some assaults uh, by these uh, Muslims, I think at least one more afterwards. But for the most part, things were played defensively. The final play was this minus two diplomacy up here on the Armenians. Uh, that gave a four in six chance, essentially, of bringing the Armenians on the side of the Christians. That didn't work, though. Uh, that would have been a major swing to have this army available to help uh, rampage or stop the rampaging of the Saracens there. Now we're going to have to go to the end of the turn stuff where maybe these armies just disband. Well, the Seljuk forces disbanded here at Antioch, whereas the much less uh, progressive siege did not disband. Uh, well... That moves our game turn ahead to turn two, and really nothing's happening. And it's kind of annoying because you'd want the Civil War to be playing out, but it's not really to anyone's advantage right now. Now, I think the Muslims have to try to do something to get Cairo. It's not absolutely clear to me. I'll look at the, rule, the rules for the scenario again to make sure that I understand it correctly, but I believe with the Christians' uh, faction or the Christian allied faction holding Cairo, they actually can win the game. Oh. But if that's the case, then they still need, well, see, I don't know if they own that or not. I gotta look at this. The way I'm reading this is as long as their leader is here in Cairo, I think they do own it. So Christian victory points are actually high enough that they would win this scenario if nothing changes. And the opposite had been true, um, which might have made making the choice to take this side the incorrect one. You should have taken the one that was in Cairo, but they lucked out with the card. Anyway, it's time to mobilize more troops and deal out another hand of cards. Well, the cards are dealt out, the uh, troops are placed, and it's kind of beginning to look a little tricky for the Seljuks at this point. First of all, knocked out of Cairo. Beyond that, the Siege of Damascus. Now they're building up a force to try to swing down and hit that, maybe break that siege. But still, they need to deal with Cairo as well. And they're losing that battle. And if they're swinging down this way, well, maybe they're risking an attack on Aleppo, for example. It's hard to tell. Speaking of which, I think I'll put the two Crusaders here instead. Um, that's legitimate. <coughs> I forgot to dismantle the guy, I think, in Adana. Anyway, a uh, little bit of a risk in terms of the plan. But if it works out, if, for example, he's able, if uh, Nur al Din's able to defeat Almeric in a fairly significant manner, the majority of his force is more poised to uh, intervene in Egypt or at least to cause some serious problems here in, in Jerusalem itself, which is what he really needs to do. But I don't know if I see much likelihood. This is a tough scenario for the Seljuks, I think. Um, of course, there's a lot of luck in this game, always. There really is. Well, Elmerich opened the turn up with what I think was probably a mistake. He had a bunch of siege cards, but the numbers weren't there, and he got the resistance value down to two and took a roll anyway. 
ended up losing two more steps. He lost a number of steps due to some of the actions taken. Uh, ooh, which one? The blockade broken one allowed an attack that was a attrition roll, etc. And he just didn't have enough force. He did get most of his car or some of the cards that he played back, two out of three, I think. But he should have pulled more of the uh, forces up before actually really trying to pursue the siege. Well, I may have just cheated with the Muslim player, but I don't know how to read this. Dispute over uh, division of booty. Christian player removes three units, his choice, from an unbesieged army of Muslim players' choice to his force pool. Well, the Muslim player chose the army over here in Cairo, thereby weakening it tremendously. Um, that doesn't feel like, and there's a replacement card for it, that doesn't, I like the replacement card aspect for some of the events, which is, hey, you didn't really have to do anything for this event, so you can still do as much. What I don't really like is that, well, it doesn't feel to me like if you spread out your forces, they can operate in a manner that makes sense in the crusading period. It, it just doesn't seem to me that, uh, and in and, and a lot of these ancient periods. But certainly during some of the Crusades, you saw a lot of activity happening across the board. And I feel like, for example, in the First Crusade, splitting forces is too much of a penalty for the Crusader. But anyway, going back. Um, for this particular card, it feels like it's meant to affect the Christians. But in a sense, and only to affect Christian units. Because, well, why, doesn't, why wouldn't the Muslim player be affected by it? Um, but there are going to be many cases where there are Muslim commanders or uh, minor powers which can be controlled by the Christians. And, well, I had to make a decision one way or another. With the chaos of civil war going on, reading the card as written, it seems to apply, right? And there could be Christians under the Muslim player, but it... I'm not sure it makes perfect sense the way I played it. Anyway, it definitely helps resolve the uh, Cairo situation, making it weak enough that the uh, guys who got kicked out of Cairo have a chance to go back in now. And that takes some of the pressure off the uh, Seljuks. The Muslims upgrade that by putting a heresy in place in Cairo. Now, something I might as well tell you, they don't have a card to move this forward. They're weakening Cairo as much as they can, but they can't actually attack. Now, this is scaring the crap out of the Christian player, but he can't do anything about it, actually. I was hoping to divert him with it, uh, perhaps. The siege continues, and again, kind of fails. We've gathered all, pulling troops out of Acre, even. We've gathered all the troops that we could, launched another assault, took two more step losses, and did no damage. And it's looking like Damascus isn't going to fall this turn, this year, which <laughs> means, uh, well, have to get lucky again next year for, uh, to maintain the siege. A Muslim relief force came charging down, picking up all the troops, and hit, uh, wow, that lighting is terrible, hit uh, Elmerich's uh, besieging force, in an attempt to relieve it. Now, he didn't do that. He lost the battle, but he did three casualties to his four, which is enough to have really kind of weakened. And i got to check to see if the... Oh, no, it was... Total lost units was the same. Um, it was close enough that... Or, or it was enough damage to weaken Almerich to the point where he's got almost no chance here. <laughs> okay, I had to look that up. I was uh, wrong. Almeric does get a role for uh, the diplomatic modifier shit or advantage shit. He rolled and failed. Uh, the reason he gets one, if you win the battle, you get to roll under, equal to or under, the number of troops the enemy lost, the number of units that were destroyed. It does, it's not a difference in the, the number of units destroyed, which I think I may have done earlier. I'm not sure. Uh, I know that the other battles were always more intense with one side being wiped out or something. Anyway. And after several, uh, well, one more relief attempt and a couple more draws for siege cards, the Crusaders actually got the re uh, 
resistance factor down to zero, and it was an almost even fight. They went ahead with it. They ended up losing more than the defender. It certainly wasn't a major victory in their hands. By the way, it's a major victory in the uh, defender's hand, which, among other things, that doesn't matter. Um, but and I don't know if that drives the attack off. But anyway, they took uh, enough, if it did, they ended the siege earlier. Uh, they took enough losses. Well, they're out of cards. They had it down to zero, they're back up to one. But they took a Templar loss, which is gonna be painful to recover. Um, they get one unit back next turn, but they lost the actual unit, which is painful kind of annoying. And Jerusalem's beginning to look very, very weak after having committed to this attack on Damascus. Cairo is looking like it's set up for a fall, even if the Seljuks haven't moved in there. I'd be very worried at this point as the Christians. I had thought, wow, it's the Seljuks who should be worried. Now it's beginning to look like it's the other way. Well, it's kind of interesting. I think things stay as they are. What's even weirder is I don't think there's a way of sallying forth other than through the cards. I've been looking through the siege rules, and it looks to me as though um, the attacker doesn't have an op uh, the defender doesn't have an option to just come out and offer a field battle or force a field battle. I'm not sure how reasonable that is, but I, I uh, one way or the other, because some of these sieges would be pretty close. Um, any kind of sallying out in force. You, you, you couldn't bring the whole army outside the walls in time. It would get chopped up. So usually sallying would require... You, you would have to send a first force out and achieve some sort of surprise, and then that would get bottled up. So I, I, I don't know, but it's, it's getting to the point where there are few enough crusaders around the fort that that might even work. I don't think this is going to last long, and there is a relieving force in place, so it's not really a big issue for this um, situation, but it is kind of worrisome. You know, the very last Muslim card, the siege was broken. Elmerich managed to escape, which is good for the Christians. He would be hard to replace. And now we handle the demobilization side of things. Okay, so that's the end of the game turn. And, well, Elmerich's position looks completely untenable. First of all, he's weakened in Cairo, his ally, and here his replacement rates are so low that he's going to have a really hard time defending Jerusalem. There's going to be a serious threat on sort of the center point of the Latin kingdoms over in, in uh, Palestine and the Near East. That's going to be painful as hell. Uh, I think this is a really, really bad period. And you kind of say, well, you know, if things got this bad, <laughs> wouldn't there be a crusade? Um, maybe not yet, but with the fall of Jerusalem, there certainly would be. Uh, probably with the fall of Acre, but uh, that's harder to tell. Okay, so I'll send this one up.